What is up everybody, welcome back to my channel Mr. Quatch and today we got a brand new video so we're going to be doing a tier list if you guys followed me on Twitter. Uh, I tweeted out the thumbnail yesterday saying that today is going to be a pretty lengthy video. We're going to be doing a Blazing Fest tier list. Now we're doing this in a completely brand new way and I want to see how this goes. So I'm not ranking them like SS, like S, A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever, right? Like I'm just putting them in comparison to each other and as you can see you got top tier low tier and then you have good in pve good at both good at both means that uh you know pve and pvp are the only other things uh blazing fest units are typically designed for pve but some are really good in pvp as well and for that reason i'm going to include this like you know good at both section so technically the people in the top right corner are the best Blazing Fest units, period, right? They're good in PvE, they're good in PvP, and the top tier. Now, yeah, let's jump into it. So I have a folder with all the icons. There are 23 Blazing Fest units, and I have the Reddit open. So for any information that you know, we can double check as we're going along this. I'm not going to be explaining every single unit. This is the premise that you guys at least understand. Uh, the basic amount of information that the unit you know of, you know their stats and what they do right and i'll of course link the reddit down below so you guys can take a look at the stats alongside me and the final notice before jumping straight into it is that remember that this is my opinion meaning that i can be wrong and you know other people can disagree and that is perfectly fine so you know some people get this weird idea that like i don't, I don't know well, either way, let's jump straight into it. So I'm going to be starting off, like, in order of units released. That makes sense. So, the first unit up is we're going to have Zabuza, right? Zabuza came out um, a hefty, hefty minute ago. He was the first, he was the first, like, what do you want to call him? He's the first strike mission ever released in the game, and he's the he was alongside the three other strike missions, the first batch of Blazing Fest limit breaks ever, and you know his limit breaks were really good, and because of that he's still relatively good in PVE. He's just not amazing. He gets outclassed. He's been a unit that exists in this game for you know like I don't know like over almost two years now right it's been a year and a half at least so because of that we're gonna, he's gonna be low tier and he has like no relevance in in terms of pvp and just remember low tier doesn't mean bad i'm saying low tier in comparison to the other blazing fest units right we're just ranking the blazing fest units right now the low tier means that he is the worst of the blazing fest keep that in mind uh, if one of you guys wondering why isn't he higher, simply because he has really old multipliers, two times multipliers on his, you know, normal jutsu, six times on his ultimate jutsu with single target, and that just doesn't compete even with his high stats. So, for that reason, Zabuza goes down here. Now, the next one we have is Rock Lee. So, Rock Lee is kind of in the same situation as... Let's pull up Rock Lee. Oh, Rock Lee isn't even on this thing. Okay, well, either way. So, maybe it's just Lee. Yeah, it's just under Lee. There we go. Now, Lee is... Well, the good thing about these guys that might make them slightly bit higher is that... They're under 28 cost, and most people actually at this point do have them under 20. So I'll just bring them slightly up. All right now, Lee, in this case, has very high attack stat, right? 2734. For that reason, he's pretty solid in PvE, right? Uh, his normal Jutsu isn't much, but of course, with his boost that brings him up to 150% turns, this guy can do a solid amount of damage doing like, like 30-40k single target and around that area if you have um i think closer to 50k if you have the 
you know, if you get a type effective unit. So for that reason, Lee is going to be just slightly above Zabuza. But in terms of, I'm just leaving it like this to show you that Zabuza still exists. But, you know, he's just as not good in PvP. So the next unit we have here is Shikaku Gara. So Gara, I'm gonna put him like right here with Lee, only because Gara is actually pretty solid for the amount of damage reduction he has. He's the first unit to like bring that tankiness feeling that really no other unit had at that time. See if I can pull his. Now, Gara's stats are very high for a mid-range unit. He has like 18, 1800 HP, 2258 attack, mid-range. Uh, his Jutsus do a decent amount of damage. You know, he's got four times multiplier. And the best thing about him is simply field skill, damage reduction, buddy skill, damage reduction. And then all of his dupe abilities are all damage reduction, making him a really good unit to bring on those, you know, wisdom only runs. He just tanks a lot of damage. Now, the thing is, he doesn't drop under 28, but he's still, in my opinion, better than Lee and Gar. So for that reason, I'm going to leave him at the same same spot as Lee, just slightly above Zabuza. Now, the, next, the last unit to be released that was in the strike set was Itachi. Now, Itachi is... He's still, to this day, a pretty solid unit, right? So if we take out Hachi from here, we got Axe Stats, long range, 1578 HP, 1908 attack. So he hits 2k attack with his, uh, you know, with his pills. On top of that, he goes to 2100 if you have that last dupe ability. Uh, same thing with uh, Gara. He does not drop below... 28, unfortunately, they have this weird 29 cost max dupes, which is really annoying. Uh, he has good AoE, generating chakra very easily, and then his ultimate jutsu is pretty good, right? Giving him perfect dodge for three turns while also doing a decent amount of damage for five chakra. Now, because of that reason, he's also really good at PvP. So we're gonna put him, he's not amazing, right? He's not like top tier PvP, but he's like somewhere like. Somewhere here, where he's just like, I'd say, yeah, that's fine. And we can, the thing is this, I'm doing this because of flexibility, right? This is a, a live tier list, meaning that as we go along, we can readjust people. So for that reason, Atachi is better than, the fact that he's good at PvP and PvE makes him, you know, slightly above. Like, it doesn't put him on the same level as these guys. For that reason, we'll toss Itachi up here. And you know what? For clarity's sake, we'll just separate these guys. Because, you know, I explained that. This. You guys can see. Okay. So, th these guys are no better than each other. They're all bad at PvP. Right? I just want to make that just want to make that clear. I'm just spreading them out for clarity's sake. Now, we get into the actual Blazing Fest characters that were released as Blazing Fest units, right? These guys were just lumped in there. They had their own banners when they came out. So the first one, Minato. Minato is the first vast range unit. And for that reason, it makes him really good at PvE, right? So above Atachi, he drops under 28 because he has six dupe abilities. Has very high stats, and if we ever get a new batch of limit breaks for Blazing Fest, Minato is 100% gonna be the first one to get. So he has a really good, like, I guess, potential to advance. Now, PvP is kind of like somewhere here, right? But the thing is, he's really good in PvE for the fact that a lot of things are audible at this point. He's under 28. And he has vast range, so he clears things really fast. And his Jutsu still does a good amount of damage. Now, for that reason, I wouldn't say he's too much better than Tachi, but he also has a solid amount, like, 
He's not good at PvP, but he's usable in PvP. So what we'll do is we'll slide... We'll slide Itachi over and make it like this. Okay. Just want to show that Zabuza is lower, actually, for that reason. Okay. Now... The next unit is the infamous unit, the one that was released in this game, destroyed the meta. We got one tell Naruto, and of course he's the best unit in PvP, so he goes right here, just kidding. He is dog shit in PvP. For that reason, he is going to just, we're just going to stick him in that corner for now, right? He is the, like, god tier unit that is just a broken unit. And will forever stay broken with the amount of damage he does until they release things with extremely high amounts of HP. Like, it doesn't matter because, like, one till Naruto has such a high attack stat that, you know, his boost, he does 100k damage on his jutsus. And it's just dumb, right? And the thing is, okay, if, like, they release a boss with 500k HP, that's no big deal. Just bring three one till Naruto's. You know, it's like... I don't need to go too in depth about one tell Naruto. He's just broken. That's really it. So for that reason, he'll go there. I might pull him down a little bit when we get to further units, but for now, that's just how it is. After one tell Naruto, I start forgetting what order, what things came. So now I'm just gonna start pulling out some characters. I believe Kazekagegara was next. He is good in PvP. I'd say he's more viable or just as viable as Itachi in PvP. And he's pretty solid PD, right? This is, at this point, we're getting to newer units. So they start getting uh, better, if that makes sense. Like, their stats start to become a little bit higher. And let's see. Let's actually pull up Gara's Blazing Fest info. We got 1596 HP, 1568 attack. He's a 4 chakra jutsu with a 2 times multiplier, which isn't anything fantastic. But he does have... Uh, a 65% chance of jutsu sealing and or attack reduction for 5 turns, which is a solid amount. All of his dupe abilities are wisdom damage reduction, so it makes him really good for wisdom only runs. And, yeah, he's just good. Like, people ran him in PvP, and, you know, he's still a viable option in PvP. And I think he's really solid in PvE because he has 4 8 chakra. Uh, he does a good amount of damage if the opponent is mobilized. And for that reason, I'm going to say, I was right here. I wouldn't say he's like too much better than Minato, but he does, the fact that he is usable in both PvE and PvP just pushes him slightly up. Now the next unit that we're going to go into will probably be, I think, I think I'm still in order, but I'm going to start jumping out of order once like, you know, we, we get things. This guy. He's in this general area, right? Utakata is just an amazing unit. He is, like, he doesn't have that high of an attack stat, but it doesn't matter. Because he does a dumb amount of damage. Let's see. And, like, I'm not talking about blazing. I didn't mention um, Phantom Castle on here. Because Phantom Castle is just so damn easy that, like, you can bring any brain dead unit and still do fine. But Utakata is probably, like, one of the best, if not the best, unit in Phantom Castle. So, like, that's just something else to keep in mind. Now, the thing is, Utakata is really good in PvE. I mean, and PvP. So, he's gonna be, like, somewhere in this region, right? Utakata is one of my favorite units. You know, so he's got, like, 1400 uh, HP and attack. They're about the same. And his field skill and buddy skill are 15 to 20% damage reduction. Buddy skill is 20% damage reduction. So, it's, like, completely outclasses this Gara down here. His normal jutsu does 10 times attack if they have slip damage, which is so easy to pull off. And then his ultimate jutsu does 11 times attack, does slip damage 100% of the time, and restores 3 chakra. So, it's just too good. It's just too good. You bring multiple utakatas, any skill mission is a breeze. And then, of course, you don't even get like started with the dupe abilities. You can ignore barriers, and he has an extra 200 attack up. And then he has body damage reduction, which isn't a big deal. If it was heart damage reduction, it'd be significantly better. 
So for that reason, we'll stick Utakata up here for now, right? Alright, he's pretty top tier. The next unit, this is where I literally don't know who's next. So, just bear with me. We're gonna go with Killer B. Killer B, once again, good at PvP. But, actually, I'd say he's just as good as Utakata in PvP. Being 4 Chakra, uh, a solid body unit. I don't know why I'm putting him over here. I don't think... He's better than Utakata, but he's definitely top tier. In terms of Blazing Fist unit, of course. So let's take a look at B. We got 2,000 attack, short range, 2,000. It's 2,100 attack, 2, uh, 1,900 HP, right? He's got 15% chance of dodge on his buddy skill, which makes him solid in PvP. Then, of course, his normal jutsu is 4 chakra, 5 times attack single target and that's just a high amount of damage right four chakra five times attack as ultimate jutsu is uh 11.5 times attack to a single target but ignores their perfect dodge which i completely forgot about to be honest and then you have his dupe abilities which are two he can his attack can go up by 300 first one being first dupe ability being attack up 100 second dupe ability being attack up 200 and then he's got uh three Three dupe abilities that are 100 HP, restores 100 HP every turn. So for that reason, you know, he's pretty up there. I'd say he's not better than Utakata, but he is still pretty good in PvP. So for that reason, we'll put B over there. Now, I wanted to jump into the next unit. What are we going to go with? I think... I think it's... Not a, right? Not a garbage at PvP, but amazing PvE unit. So let me pull up Sunade. There we go, Sunade. You got sixteen seventy two long range attack. Of course, her HP is horrible, eighteen six eight sixteen, but it doesn't really matter because HP is not like a big deal in this game. You have so much HP at this point, like going into missions with at least 10,000, 12,000 HP, that having 1,000 less on a single unit is not going to matter. Her normal Jutsu recovers 3,400 HP, boosts attack by 25% for 10 turns, and of course her ultimate Jutsu is 13 times attack, single target, and then restores her own HP by 2,000. So she can, if you do it properly, actually get to 150% attack boost if you run you know however funky things you want to do it but you got her dupe abilities are pretty solid increasing her overall healing by a total of let's see 500 300 200 so by a total of 10 uh, by a thousand right so she's healing a lot of hp on her jutsu and she boosts her attack even more right she can go up an extra 200 attack and for that reason Tsunade is pretty top tier uh, i'd say Ooh, I didn't want to move that. So, what I'm actually going to do is... I'm going to pull... B down. Put Utakata a little bit up. Because I think Tsunade is just somewhere in between there. Right? I think Utakata is still the best skill unit. And for that reason, we'll put Tsunade a little bit below Utakata. Right? There. I think that looks better. Now... Next unit, that's a good question. What are we gonna go with? Go with Obito. All right, Obito, definitely good at PvP. So he's gonna be somewhere on this side. And then he's pretty solid in PvE as well. So I'm gonna say he's, I don't know, like, I think he's used more than Utakata. So I'll put him, let's see, let's pull up Obito real quickly. Obito, 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 go. So we got fast range unit, right? 1500 attack. Uh, he has, of course, field skill damage reduction, and buddy skill is chance of dodge. The thing is, I don't know, like, he needs dupe abilities, right? Why am I doing this? He needs dupe abilities, 100%. 
like you need one minimum and of course ideally you'd want all of his dupe abilities but let's just say that you know if you have all those dupe abilities because there are a billion you know ability stones going around so we'll just take this case as him at max dupes so i'd say he's an amazing unit for pve he does a billion damage and on top of that he's just good in pvp so i'd say for a wisdom unit he's like i don't i th i think Uzukata is just amazing right so we'll put him like I think this this would be the proper way to put him like he's not better than utakata but he's almost like i think actually they're like so similar in how good they are in pvp but i think obito might be slightly better in pvp than utakata because he got a little buff right with speed but for that reason i'll put him like this Let's see now. Next unit. Let's go with Hashirama. Hashirama Senju. You now, God of Shinobi. But very reliant on his dupe abilities. But for the same reason that I just said, I'm going to include dupe abilities in this assessment. He got long range 1806 HP, 1326 attack. Uh, 4 chakra is 6 times attack. You got. 50% chance of recovery ceiling and or reducing their attack for 4 turns each. 8 chakra uh, attacks all enemies in range. 50% chance of immobilization for 2 turns and or seals their jutsu. He's just really good um, really good multipliers. And then of course with his dupe ability he's a very solid tank. And he has a buddy heal. He has a field heal and a buddy heal. For that reason I'm going to say he's also very viable in PvP. I don't think he's like... I put him here. Like, yeah, I think that's about right. I actually think Tsunade might be a little bit better. Down. This should also just be all the way to the left. Tsunade's dog shape PvP. Okay, now. Let's go into... Let's go into Pain, right? Pain was a pretty underwhelming unit. Like, he could have easily not been a Blazing Fest and no one would have cared. He's just... Dupe abilities, dupe abilities are very underwhelming. Just reduces chance of being sealed and or immobilized. He doesn't do anything in PvP. And he just... He heals on his normal jutsu for 5 chakra, but he just doesn't heal enough. He's just good, but he's not great, right? Why can't I click? Why can't I click? There we go. So for that reason... Yeah, that's it. I wouldn't say he's... Um, anything amazing. I'll actually bring Gara up. I think they're similar in power. I didn't I just literally have him here because I don't want to cover the word good. That's it. But otherwise I'd bring him I'd say he's actually it doesn't matter. Cover the word up if I want to. Right. Actually that tilts me a little bit. Go like this. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Punish me. Okay. Now, we have just a few more units left. We have... Jubito, who is amazing in both. Right? He is... Just... Somewhere here. I think he is amazing in PvP, and for that reason, that pulls him over Utakata. And he just nukes in PvE. So, I'm gonna put him right there. I think he's a simple one to assess. Nothing too crazy. Let's go with Might Guy. 
another underwhelming unit. He has a lot of damage, but isn't viable in PvP. Uh, he just has good attack, and you know, for that reason, he has that like auto evolve feature to him, where you can just kind of just like auto things. So, for clarity's sake, I'm just putting him like this, uh, so I don't like really cover up the other units. Now, I do want to. I think these units aren't like there's not much discussion on them. So I do want to jump into the other units. Oh, how did I forget this guy? How did I forget this guy? Very viable in PvE, but also just amazing in PvE. Don't think. I really should have added the text as a separate thing. Okay. So, put him like this. I think he might be more viable. Alright. That's fine. Even him out a little bit. Okay. Now we got... Let's go with... Let's go with... Kakashi. Solid PvP and PvE. Insane amount of nuking damage. I right, just melts through everything. But he is... There, I'm gonna pull this Obito down a little bit. Uh, Sakura. To match the Kakashi. I don't think the Sakura is better than the Kakashi, but I think the Sakura is better at... Yeah. I don't know, she has her 6 chakra thing, she's a threat. But, we'll, for we'll just say that she's just as good. Alright, in terms, like, we'll go like that. I think the Kakashi is definitely better. And, let's see. I only have like two or three more units left. Like, who am I missing? Oh, we were just missing two characters. We have the last Naruto. Ooh, I haven't had too much personal experience with him in PvP, but I know he's definitely good because I've gotten destroyed by him. And he just does, he does type negation, right? On his, I pull up his stats real quickly. I want to speed it up a little bit since we are heading into, you know, number like 30 minutes in. So for that reason, I wanted to just hurry it up a little bit. 2200 attack, 20, 2204 attack, short range, 2100 HP. His body skill re restores 250 health, 4 chakra, nullifies jutsu damage, you know, 5.5 times attack. And for 2 turns, he nullifies jutsu damage to himself. Alright. 12 points, so he's really good at Ninja Road as well. We got ultimate, it's 8 chakra, 12.8 times attack, knocks him back, restores 1 chakra. So it's like a 7 chakra jutsu, that one's not that big of a deal, but he also. He re restores two chakra because his hit count is 20. So he's restoring two chakras. So it's technically a six chakra j ultimate jutsu. Just keep that in mind. He's a little tanky, right? He has damage reduction, dupe abilities, ignores barriers, increases his ultimate jutsu multiplier, and he has type. He can negate type disadvantage. For that reason, he is top tier, but I don't think he's amazing at pve because they actually nerf him in pve so he doesn't have type negation and he just restores one chakra on his normal jutsu in pve in pvp for that reason i'll stick him right there now we have actually i missed out the nagato right nagato bonkers in pvp nuts in pve six chakra jutsu really well rounded I think Nagato is one of the best units in PV, no, like one of the best Blazing Fest units you can run in PV, PvP. For that reason, stick him um, right here, on, on par with Kakashi. 
but just really good at PV PvP. So I don't think his PvE is that good, but like his damage reduction, but the thing is damage reduction doesn't matter too much in PV. It matters, but it doesn't matter as much as it does in PvP. So I might pull him down a little bit. Actually, no, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Now the last unit is of course the last Sasuke. Actually I want to make sure. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, what am I missing? I thought I did every unit. Oh, I'm missing the, the Sage of Six Paths units. Alright, the Renegon Sasuke and the Sage of Six Paths Naruto. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. My bad. This, this is a long ass video, so bear with me. Now you got the last Sasuke. He's really not that good at PvP. But his PvE is solid. But I think the Naruto is better. I'm gonna put him right there. Now, Rinnegan Sasuke. I can do these guys really quickly. So. Naruto is better in PvP, and he is just an amazing unit, right? Generating a chakra, uh, so much like life restoration. I think Sasuke is just as good, but not as good in PvP. So for that reason, I'll pull him just a little bit under, under the, under the Naruto. Now, now I think I got everyone. But let's just double check. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3. Okay, here we go. Thank you guys for whoever bared with me in this long discussion, 32 minutes in. I really appreciate it. If you guys like this, I can do something similar with the Blazing Bash and just other tier lists in general. Let me know what you guys think of this idea of this like live tier list where I can just break it down with you guys as I go along. Just move it around. And of course, if you guys disagree, let me know who you think should be higher, to the right, to the left, down below, whatever you guys want to say. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And of course, I'll see you all next time. Peace out.